All right, good evening and welcome everyone to As He Is, So Are We. Good to see Dr. Faye Hanshu joining us tonight. Uh, good to see Joanne W. Johnson joining us tonight. Good to see Dr. K. Fairchild joining us tonight, who also will be my guest this coming Thursday. And um, uh, good to see everybody as the numbers are growing and continue to grow as we get started here tonight. Uh, so uh, we are talking about uh, a brand new series, uh, Conversations with the Cloud of Witnesses. I tried and tried and tried to fit that into the advertisement about an hour ago, and all them words just wouldn't fit. So I had to just put Cloud of Witnesses, but that's where we're going. Uh, good to have uh, back with us Apostle Christopher, uh, Dr. Christopher Anderson, sorry, uh, who is only with us on audio tonight. And then good to have um, uh, Apostle Daniel back. Uh, good to have Dr. Cindy Coates back. She's getting set up here. She's been having some freezing up problems. And our guest tonight, Apostle Brian Christian uh, from Parts Unknown, traveling around, <laughs> around the globe uh, somewhat. Uh, good to have you tonight, brother. Uh, so honored to have everybody. So I'm excited particularly about this subject because this is really a powerful subject. Good to see uh, uh, Evangelist Candy Corser joining us in the chat room tonight. Uh, so uh, as we talk about uh, conver conversations with the cloud of witnesses, I think it's also important that we understand the cloud of witnesses. And uh, I'm sure that our panel is going to help us tonight to fill in the gaps and help this uh, to become uh, an easier, uh, an easy to understand uh, concept. Uh, because, you know, one of the things that people really have problems with traditionally is communicating with those who have passed on. Uh, you can call them the dead, uh, but really, uh, we're a group of people who really don't believe in dead people. Uh, this is not the show of the walking dead. <laughs> uh, but but uh, but what people do is they literally pass from invisible uh, from visibility back to invisibility. Now that's easy to understand if you look at John chapter one verse fourteen, where Jesus was the Word made flesh. The Passion translation says that he was the living expression made visible, and and quite honestly, spirit slowed down the visibility when you leave this natural realm of appearance uh, with where where you cannot behold someone with your eyesight, have a conversation with them uh, with your mouth mouth in a sense and hear them with your ears in a sense. Uh, it just means that they have gone from the visible realm back to the invisible realm and back to is I use it very loosely because back to sounds like it's some far away distant place when in reality it's not. Uh, a realm within a realm within a realm and here we are. And so uh, we're as we talk about this tonight, uh, I want everybody that's watching tonight, at least if, if this is hard for you to grasp, at least consider that those who have left this realm and appear as what society calls them as dead, in reality, uh, uh, death is not a true reality. It's just a carnal excuse for what happened to our loved ones. Uh, but if we who are spirit manifest as visible in the appearance realm, then people who disappear from our natural eyesight are those who have simply returned to the in realm of invisibility. Uh, and so uh, people want to know, where did they go? What happened to them? 
and um, uh, how and how can we communicate with them? And if we can, how do we communicate with them? I want to give you Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 4, and then we'll get our panel talking. I'm just using first off the King Jan New King James Version. It says, Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, uh, his brother, led them to a high mountain uh, by themselves. And as he was transfigured, this is a very important word in our discussion, as he was transfigured before them, his his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Uh, and uh, behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them. How I many know in the Old Testament, Moses and, Eli Moses and Elijah, who were visible, also became invisible, or they returned to the realm of invisibility, uh, talking with him, with him, with Jesus. Uh, then Peter said, uh, and answered and said uh, to Jesus, Lord, uh, is it, uh, Lord, it is good. Now, you have to understand the whole whole story here, uh, but uh, just, I, I'm not going to tell it, I'm just going to say that he says, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Yeah, uh, prideful Peter. Uh, if you wish, let us, or I will make, in other words, uh, uh, us uh, make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. So having understood that they were those who um, uh, is in, in the realm of, of visibility, but they came from the realm of invisibility, here Peter is pointing out some things and uh, I, I just want to look at the word transfigured before I get our panel talking. The word transfigured uh, is the Greek word metamorpho, which is interpreted as to change, and the biblical usage of the word is to change into another form. But what did Jesus change into, or was he simply changed from walking in the appearance of a human uh, being alone, or did he transform supernaturally into that uh, uh, which caused the, uh, the, his humankind or humankind to see him differently? All right. So uh, 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 just recently we had a graduation last Saturday and we graduated 117, uh, uh, 27 students uh, with a variety of degrees, mostly our our uh, associate bachelor and master students, but our professors also who qualified uh, were uh, awarded some degrees and uh, Christopher Anderson, uh, hi Dr. Cindy, good to see you. Uh, Christopher Anderson, who we've been adjusting to calling apostle all this time, uh, got his uh, doctorate degree and so it's now Dr. Christopher Anderson, but also he is now our brand new national director over the USA and um, uh, so uh, a lot of things going on here. He also is not uh, live with us. He is in the chat room, but he's uh, audio only. Uh, so Apostle Christopher, I want to throw uh, the, the mic to you first. And um, uh, what happened to these people? Where did they come from? What's going on here when we talk about transfiguration and the realm of, of uh, coming from the realm of invisibility? Talk to us, Pastor. So you come from this realm of invisibility. Your, um, um, I remember when I remember reading, I remember the scripture where Jesus says, "Hey, listen, um, Father, restore to me the glory that I had before uh, the foundations of the world." You know, and if He had a glory, then so do I, and so does everyone else. In other words, we were before we we were in the earth realm. There's an there's an everlasting there's a, uh, uh, Apostle Brian being here, but there's an everlasting relationship here. Prior, you know, a reality of uh, us being before the foundations of the world. I'm gonna be very honest with you. It wasn't until I came into the awareness, the oneness reality awareness, that I was even even able to embrace these truths in regards to. Uh, the scripture that you read, Dr. Bill, because here we have Jesus, because where I came from, it was highly condemned to, uh, uh, it was highly condemned to, you know, to, to reference talking to anyone who has passed on invisibility. And so, um, uh, but Jesus, did, but in this scripture, Jesus did. Or, 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 or it's got to be some explaining to do. At least on the surface, it appears, it, at least the scriptures say that it appears so. And so um, I've heard all kinds of different excuses um, in regards to that. Uh, Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. Um, 
but but when it comes down to this this scripture it says that he he talked with them they appeared and he talked with them so much so that peter was like hey i want to build i want let's let, i want to build tabernacles let, let's have them abide here you know so forth and so on and so this concept this this reality of talking to those who have went back to invisibility i'm gonna be honest this is new for me it, but it is exciting um it is exciting dr bill amen amen and uh, we're, we're taking three minute rounds, uh, 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 more or less, and trying to get everybody in here as many times as possible. Apostle Daniel, uh, thank you so much for uh, being on tonight. Uh, what are we seeing here? What is your take on this? Well, the way I see it is we, we have two worlds, so to speak, that uh, exist simultaneously at, right here together. And that is the supernatural realm and the natural realm. And what happened was that Mo Moses and Elijah were not somewhere else. They were there all along. And when, uh, when, Thank you. when that point come along where, where the transfiguration took place, merely timeless, uh, timelessness and eternity and time and, and the natural realm come together in, in one, at, at one time and visibility happen. And uh, it's just like, you know, I had a, a, a gentleman that passed away that I, I loved him greatly. He was, he was part of a, a ministry that, that, that I had going at the time many years ago. And he got in a horrific uh, car accident. He, the sun hit him directly in the eyes and he pulled out and uh, into the traffic and he went, went home to be with the Lord, so to speak. But I, I remember that and it, it kind of, you know, it, it hit me kind of hard, but I drove by his apartment where I'd, uh, I'd you know, I'd recently spent time with him and I literally saw him in his window smiling and waving at me. Uh, because there, there is no distance. There is absolutely zero distance. If the Lord would uh, allow us right now to see uh, supernaturally, you would see the people that have gone on before you as though they never went anywhere at all. And that's how I perceive it to be. Go ahead, Bishop. Thank you so much. And, and they, were, they were there the entire time. Uh, I love that. Uh, and there's some things I could bring out uh, where scripture validates that. Now, uh, tonight I'm going to do something completely different. Usually it's ladies first, but I'm going to have Dr. Cindy uh, be, the, be the home run, home, home run hitter tonight. Uh, so uh, our guest, Apostle Brian, I, I know you teach a lot on this. This is one of, your, uh, one of your, your fortes. And you and I have talked about this on different discussions before. And, and we get out there, so to speak. But... But we are people who have interacted with the cloud of witnesses. We've heard them speak to us, and we have spoken to them. Uh, I want you to bring some uh, some uh, clarity here as we're talking about this portion of Scripture. What's going on here? What are you seeing when it comes to conversations with the cloud of witnesses? Well, I totally agree with everything that's already been said from Apostle Daniel and uh, Dr. Christopher. Uh, I think it's right up the same alley. I, I believe it's it comes down to awareness. It comes down to consciousness. Uh, even though we're living in this timeline human experience, uh, transfiguration to me is waking up to the reality. Uh, you, you're here, but you've never came. You're there, but you were never sent, but yet we're here. Okay. And so, so you know, uh, becoming conscious of your humanity, uh, when we take on the visible physical realm as our ultimate reality, we become entangled with the cares of this life. Uh, we put a veil over us and we're not aware of the reality, uh, the fact that everybody is already in us, we're one, uh, that the cloud we're surrounded with is from within, it's not even external, and that everything we're externally experiencing in this dimension is through the framework of conclusion, culture, uh, definition, human definition. And, um, and so when Jesus went up there on the Mount uh, and test drove, if I could put it in a timeline version, 
test drove his glorification. Uh, he revealed that uh, you, you can actually bypass uh, walking through situations in life and actually just get to the end of the matter. And I believe that um, had he not experienced that depth of revelation of transfiguration, he might not have had the grace to journey through it in the timeline version of himself. Uh, you know, it says uh, the present suffering is nothing compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. And so you, you need to know the purpose of what you're walking through in, in order to bypass performance and partner with grace. And I believe that uh, Jesus was doing that in the form of this transfiguration. Another word for transfiguration, I, don't know, I think it might be in the Hebrew, it's the word exastrapto, which is referring to the shining garments of Jesus, uh, the, the shining glory, the light. And, um, and so, you know, when it says in John 1, uh, every man is lit when he enters the world, uh, that's us moving at the speed of light. That's us as spirit moving at the speed of light, slowing down to visibility, as Kay Fairchild would put it. And, um, you know, and so can we really even prove we have a physical body or are we simply conscious of the framework of conclusion? Uh, even our physical visible body is actually light in its true form. And so all Jesus did was enter into reality. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, because I, I know this is that's why I brought you on, because I know you have some insight on this now. Now, Dr. Cindy. Um, this Thursday, Dr. K. Fairchild is going to be on my show uh, this Thursday. And uh, when she, when her husband uh, returned to invisibility, uh, at, there was a point in time where she heard him speak to her and he said these words, keep your body. Okay. Now, my wife, uh, Dr. Fahan, she says before her father passed away, she told him, Dad, please tell God uh, to let me see you and Mom, and he did. Uh, she saw them, exactly what she asked for. So she has seen into the realm of invisibility or into the realm of the cloud of witnesses. Our son-in-law had a big decision to make about work recently, okay? And he, he, he got a lot of advice. He, got a lot, he talked it over with a lot, of, but he came to us for counsel, and uh, we gave him our input, but uh, he, but he heard his dad, his dad, I did the, the, the funeral a few years ago, his dad, he heard his dad um, uh, say, son, you made the right decision. <laughs> And, and so more and more people are hearing from the cloud of witnesses. Uh, so Dr. Cindy, I know you've had a lot of experiences communicating with your mother and, uh, you know, uh, so go for it. Oh, wow. The bases are loaded, guys. You get ready to <laughs> run and let's just make this whole thing a grand slam. How about that? Um, so I am not sitting in Jekyll Island. Um, I wish. I'm, I'm actually in this hot office in Atlanta. So, uh, I have to, uh, but I'm pretending, you know, that's, that's what's important. <laughs> we have to use our imagination sometimes. Thank God for green screens. But anyway, um, so yeah, um, guys, I got to tell you this, I, I did have a lot going on with my mother and, and I'm going to give you testimony, not so much scripture right now, maybe a little bit of scripture, but I'll give you testimony. Um, since I was a little girl, um, I've always, uh, had, um, I always heard and, and could feel the essence, the presence of, of people that I didn't really know, but when I would talk about them to my mother, my dad, they would say, gosh, you sound, you, it's as though you're describing someone they knew that had passed in our family, like messages. And this almost sounds a little bit like some sort of sci-fi movie, but I, it isn't, it's real. I'm just letting you guys know it's just real. So that was a real thing to me. It wasn't until I got to church later on in life that I was told that if you talk to the dead, um, that that was necromancing or whatnot. And it, it was a, a, a form of witchcraft, perhaps, or some kind of uh, sorcery and whatnot. Well, I got to thinking about it and I thought, well, I'm not talking to dead people. <laughs> I'm talking to people that are alive in Christ, you see, or they're talking to me or they're getting messages to me. 
I do believe that the word says that they become like the angels. They become messengers in our life. I really believe that. Um, I, lost, I lost both my grandmother and my grandfather that I was so dear. Uh, they were close to me when I was 16 years old. Um, my parents divorced when I was five years old. My grandfather was my father figure in my life. I kind of have an old soul in a lot of ways because of him uh, raising me the way he did in a, in a lot of ways. And so um, he had a lot of good old common horse sense. And so I kind of had wisdom beyond my years because I would actually have him communicate with me a lot, like how to change a tire. Nobody ever showed me how to change a tire. I had to go change a tire on the side of the road. And I really did feel my granddaddy was standing there telling me what to do. And he was already gone into the great cloud of witnesses. Um, my mother passed away in 2000. Uh, well, let's go back to my daddy. My daddy passed away in 2007. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have had like just encounters with him or his essence, his spirit, even though. So I felt, yeah, guys, I'm going to tell you something. I felt closer to him after he passed away. Like there were no, there were no barriers. Like, like we were, we were more connected when he was on the other side uh, of the veil or the, the realm or the membrane or whatever that is that separates us from them. Um, we, I enjoyed him. We, I could, he had an amazing sense of humor. It was hilarious. And I could hear his jokes and, and humor and, and things like somebody would be talking. And I got to kind of hear my daddy talking on this side of my making. Um, uh, he, he always came up with these zingers, you know, one liners. My daddy was a one liner guy. He was so funny. And I could sometimes I just start laughing and somebody goes, well, you're in a good mood. I'm actually hearing my daddy talking to me. You know, I mean, they, I would never tell them that. But that's what was going on. You know, I was going, oh, my gosh. They wouldn't even understand if I tried to explain it to him, his sense of humor. My mother passed away when I was 12, uh, in 2012. Um, she was a CPA. She was a financial uh, lady. Uh, I grew up on a ledger sheet. I've told you guys before. I, I worked with her every tax season and all through my childhood. And we, you know, that's what we did, taxes. And she kept books. And my mother was good at money. She great at investing money. And after she passed away, I didn't even know what to do with my inheritance. She started telling me what to do with my inheritance. She started telling me where to invest money. She started telling me what to do with finances. I mean, just about every week, at least once or twice a week, I hear my mother giving me instructions on what to do with finances. Because that's just what she left in me and she left that around me. Um, and so I don't, we don't communicate with the dead. They're alive. They're alive in Christ. They're not dead. I don't talk to dead people. Uh, uh, they're alive. They're in another realm and they're in an unlimited form. They're not, they're not restricted by their physical body, their physical limitations or their, their um, emotional or mental limitations, if you will. Perhaps they had some sort of a uh, and I don't know, let's just say that they had a difficult time communicating in this realm. They had a hard time articulating the way they feel or what they think. But when they go into the other realm, it's like there's none of that. They just flow and talk to you and you talk back to them. And there's a lot of good fellowship with the great cloud of witnesses. I'm telling you, I love it. It's wonderful. Wonderful. I mean, just real quick example the other day, like, like I don't know, 10 days ago, I, I really felt like I got a message from my mother that Bitcoin was going to go down to 17,000. Oh, I told some friends, I went, no way. Well, it did on Saturday. I bought some. It's gone up 4,000 in just a few days. So, you know, I listened to my mama. I'm telling you, I'm still listening to my mama. And y'all, hey, y'all should listen to her too. I'm kidding. It's a good thing. But she's kind of giving me, she knows what's going on in the, on the blockchain my mama didn't even know anything about the blockchain in 2012 but now she does because she's out there with the you know in the with jesus and the angels and they know all about all that stuff so you know technology was around in creation and, and we just now found out about it but the blockchain was around in genesis we just didn't know about it but now look but so isn't that cool i'm excited about this topic okay 
And that's just an example right there of communicating with people, conversing with people, hearing those who are not with us anymore uh, in a sense of the word. Now, uh, something Dr. K. Fairchild has tried to, and I'm going to say this uh, this way, I don't know, uh, we've never talked about it this way, but she's tried to drill this into me, uh, and I've struggled with it. Uh, and that's uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 uh, from the Amplified Bible that says, "May your spirit, your may your spirit, soul, and body be kept complete, complete as one." So you know when I talk about a realm within a realm within a realm, it's almost like spirit, soul, and body inhabiting the same vessel. There's the triune representation, but at the same time, uh, I'm connected to all of you and everybody out there uh, watching today. It says, "May may your may your spirit, soul, and body be kept complete and be found blameless." at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, of course, that is an English rendering of that particular part of Scripture. But the reality is, is that when we talk about this, we're talking about uh, the manifesting. The word come is, ek, 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 uh, um, I'm going to say this wrong, I'm sure, because I'm still learning Greek, but eklegomai, I believe. Uh, and But it, it, actually what it's talking about is the manifesting of Christ. And where he's manifesting is in your awareness. And so my question is this, did the transfiguration of Jesus have any bearing on his ability to converse with the dead? Uh, and, and of course, he's Jesus, okay? Now, I just spent uh, last year, hundred. Uh, well, it took me almost four years, 193 lessons from the book of Revelation, and I constantly ran across angels as heavenly messengers uh, up from the cloud of witnesses. That's my, my explanation of angels, the English word angels, which is an English word, not a Greek word, but it actually, angelos, actually means the heavenly messengers from the cloud of witnesses. And, and so I want to follow that up by asking this, do we live from a transfigured place? Now, there's a quote I want to give, uh, and I'm going to read a scripture before we get back to uh, Dr. Christopher. Uh, this quote says, we can agree that we are in Christ, and in him we live and move and have our being. So why are you experiencing demons, or does Jesus need to be uh, delivered? Because everything you've ex you're experiencing, you've ex you're experiencing from within him him. So if I'm in him and I'm experiencing warfare, what I'm in reality experiencing or really experiencing is a twisted image of the truth. Thou shalt have no graven images before me. This is a quote by Apostle Brian Christian. And, you know, there's a lot of things we've seen in the natural and we've, and we've embraced. I mean, just like embracing a long lost friend, we've embraced with passion these erroneous things from English versions of scripture when Here's a, a real awakening. The Bible was not written in English. Okay, it was not written using the Webster's Dictionary. It was not written using a, any modern vernacular. Uh, even though we've had theologians over the last three to five thousand years or three to five hundred years interpreting Scripture, guess what? Some people made some mistakes. But it was written in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and etc. And there's also definitions that go with those languages. Now I want to give you Hebrews 12 verse 1 in the New King James Version to start with. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily ensnare us and let us run with endurance the race that is before us. Why? Because the cloud of witnesses help us. They speak to us. They cry over us. They, they bend their ear to hear our prayers or our, our, our crying out. Uh, there are so many things that the cloud, we want to say, Jesus did it. And I don't disagree, but either you believe that, that there's, there's the many-membered body of one or you don't. Okay, either we're one, and that means I'm connected to you, and you're connected to me, and I'm connected to Jesus, and I'm connected to Father and Holy Spirit, the, the, the fullness of the Godhead, literally, or you don't. So if we're one, then guess what? If someone from the cloud of witnesses is speaking to me, you can call it Jesus, you can call it Daddy, you can call it Mama Sue, you can call it whoever you want to. But when my dad left this realm of appearance, you know what? Uh, two hours a, 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 a time later, uh, probably a week later, I don't know, days later, after his passing, so to speak, and I don't even like that word, I was at home, back home from the trip, 
sitting in my recliner, just sitting there relaxed, and I heard my father's voice. And my father spoke to me from the cloud of witnesses, acknowledging that he now had a full awakening and realized he didn't have to leave in the first place. He could have stayed. Amen. All right, Dr. Christopher. Woof, Lord, woof, my God, it's, it's <laughs> fire, it's fire up in here. Yeah. My goodness. And so, I, you know, in, in hindsight, I think about the fact that the Western church, the American church, um, is really not sensitive to uh, spirit, sp the spiritual realm reality. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a matter of trying to obtain, uh, you know, in the, um, in the natural. I remember listening to a teaching some time ago by Apostle Brian Christian, and, um, and he had a guest on there, and they were talking about the lie of lack mm -hmm. and how, and how um, it, well, for me, what I realized is that I lived my Christian walk, not, real, not from the reality of my um, being in Christ, but from, from the place of the, lie of the lie of lack. And when it comes down to embracing mm -hmm. the, the oneness reality and, and the fact that I'm living my life in Christ, um, all of it, you know, it, it awakens me to the spiritual realm reality that, 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 that I'm, I am, I am, I am a spirit being first. And, um, with that reality comes the truth that since, since those who have went back to invisibility, um, are back in my first, my, my original state, um, it would make sense that I would be able to converse with them. They're not gone. See, see, religion had taught me that they're, when they're gone physically, then they're, then we're disconnected. But, but because of the church being insensitive to the spiritual realm, I know that to not be the reality that I, that we walk in. And since I am in Christ and always have been, um, even before the foundations of the world, we are all still one. And so, um, it, this is like this is this is this is new for me. This is fresh, but it's bearing witness within me. Um, and, and and if you're living in a culture that does not embrace the spiritual realm reality, of course they wouldn't be able to embrace a teaching like this one, uh, Doctor Bill. Yes, yes, Amen. So true, <laughs> and and don't think that I don't realize that this can be uh, what is determined is out there. I get it, uh, but. You know what? Uh, it's in here. If you don't realize there's a supernatural realm, then I think I think you're going to miss the whole point. And uh, you know, one thing I hate about it is when I, my wife's trying to explain something to me, I, I, last thing I want to do is miss the point. I want to understand. And so don't throw away the supernatural. Uh, you know, Apostle Brian and I, we like uh, um, uh, Marvel comics and, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the various dimensions out there in the multiverse and etc. And yet we could we could buy that. man. that's so cool. But you can't buy that when it comes to the supernatural realm. Seriously. And so, you know, uh, yeah, so much out there. All right. Apostle Daniel, bring it on. <laughs> Many membered body of the eternal Christ. Mm -hmm. Whether we're in our body, our flesh body, or out of it, you're still part of the many-member body of Christ. And I was thinking about it because I, I've asked myself a question, Bishop, uh, and wondered why. See, my dad passed out of vis uh, visibility, and he is invisible now. But I haven't <clears throat> experienced a lot of uh, missing him and the sense of grief and he's gone and all of that. I do think about it occasionally, but from the aspect of realizing even with Moses and Elijah uh, still in existence, uh, <laughs> appearing with Jesus, and yet they were not in the natural for many years prior to that, we know that. Uh, my, my dad still is. And that was the reason why, you know, I can look back at all this and all the things that I've been uh, growing in for the last five, six, seven years. I preached for 40 years. I preached everything. I preached seven raptures, um, multiple different things, a lot different now than it was. But uh, that's why I seen my friend 
in the window after uh, the the wreck that he was in, he he didn't go anywhere. And I think that's a, a very valuable thing because there's a lot of people mourning and they're in such grief of loss. Even Paul said the losses were gain. Uh, you know, just take that little expression, losses were gain. Uh, it, it, we can be in... Um, total grief because somebody now we don't see them in the physical sense or we can be in total joy knowing that they still are and I, I believe that's something we need to be established in because that'll give everybody a reason of hope that is in us which is Christ the hope of glory go ahead Bishop yes amen uh, now, Apostle Brian, I'm going to throw you a curb uh, in that there was a question in the chat room. What about dreams? Uh, are we communicating with the cloud of witnesses in dreams when we see and talk to our loved ones? What do you say? Uh, definitely. Um, because, well, uh, scientifically speaking, uh, there's no difference between your awake life and your dream life. Uh, the mind takes both as reality. I mean, we don't know if we're awake right now. In fact, because there's no time uh we have chosen this moment to be conscious of it we don't even know if we've repeated it a thousand times to make sure that everything was heard and received correctly so uh you know we're we're basically conscious of one percent of reality the other 99 percent is in the subconscious okay and the subconscious is not just in the gray matter it's in spiritual motion it's in the motion of spirit that is emotion in this dimension but spiritual motion in another dimension. You know, one of the things that Jesus said, he said, um, says, he that believes in me shall not see death. And that word see is connected to the word theater. So in other words, if you were to sit and watch a documentary uh, based on a true story, it would still be a lie because it's actors pretending in a story that's already happened, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, but yet at the same time, let's say it's a documentary and you just get into it. Maybe you can't sleep that night or you just find yourself in the movie. How many have done that, right? You're crying, you're laughing. It's like, wow, that movie, I, that was me. Well, that's what we do. He that believes in me shall not entertain the theater of death or, or get too caught up in the movie as though it is reality. Wow, so, that's so, pretty good. That good? Isn't that good? That's really good. But you know, it's it, what, what's crazy about this is we've got to understand that, all right, God knows all things. And because he knows all things, he can't come up with an idea he doesn't already have. Uh, he would no longer be all knowing, right? So just like God creating something out of nothing is actually impossible. He took who he is and, and parabolized it, if I can put it that way, made it into a parable form or an echo uh, that, that is carrying a hidden plain speech in the intention of God. And so when you're dealing with a God thought, you have a completed action, even though there's no manifestation, it's already been lived out. So since he commanded the end from the beginning, it was lived out uh, simply by the thought of God. Now, our visible experience of it is God looking through the kaleidoscope uh, of the infinite and into the finite. Now, the reason I say this is because since God knows all things and God never ends, how does he not end if he knows all things? The moment you know it all, you just end it. Okay, so, and what the father showed me, and I was having this conversation with Enoch as we were all sitting here, and I was asking him for some advice on what to say, actually. Uh, and he said, well, tell him about how God hides himself from himself within himself to never come to the end of himself and that God conceals himself as matter. He doesn't just conceal the matter. He conceals himself as matter. And then he comes in the form of, uh, of the kings searching out his own heart. And so your human experience is God's self-awareness in the finite expression of himself because Without the finite, the infinite has no expression. It's a paused observer that cannot move or express without the finite, which now brings us to the question, when did humanity begin? Since it was always in him, in the beginning was the heavens and the earth, but the earth was without form and void. 
wait a second here. I thought in the beginning was the heavens and the earth. Or what about Psalms 139? All my members were written in the book when there was yet none of them. Were they there? Yes, they weren't visible. And so the heavens and the earth being in God is the infinite and the finite that we are experiencing because God is looking through the kaleidoscope, searching out his own heart. And so we didn't come, we didn't go. Uh, <laughs> you basically weren't born, lived, or died. You've been viewing this virtual reality or a spirit thought, a reminiscing of a possibility that is being lived out as a reality. Yeah. Did you hear that, everybody? Sitting there having a conversation with Enoch. I love it. I, I, I remember... I remember when I was, uh, uh, I remember when I, 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 I had a, it was like a vision, but it wasn't really a vision. Uh, it was like just a, a portal opened up and I was with, uh, in eternity past with Joshua uh, at the gates of Jericho on the seventh time around. Uh, and, and what, how, how does that work when you look at the cloud of witnesses? Well, remember the, 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 the head of the Lord's army which was the eternal Christ as one, the many membered body appeared to Joshua and Joshua couldn't figure out what to do. And he gave him instruction uh, the, uh, the, uh, the army, the host, of uh, uh, the Lord of the, of the uh, army of the host of the Lord. Uh, I forget exactly how that is, but anyway. Okay. So uh, now here's the thing. Oftentimes mankind is so focused on what he sees, hears and touches that they simply do not think about a supernatural realm where all, where all spirit beings uh, live and are connected to each other. Now, if, if you can grasp this after, after this uh, uh, big uh, college uh, expose Apostle Brian just laid out, uh, if, if you, you get this, uh, do you know we sometimes think about the cloud of witnesses as something other than us? So they're everybody who's not visible, uh, but we're visible, so we're different, but we're not. I'm still a part of the cloud of witnesses. As a matter of fact, someone said we're naturally supernatural. I like to say it this way, that uh, I don't see myself as much natural as I do supernatural. And the more that I am renewed or awakened to truth, the less I see myself in the natural realm. Paul said uh, to, 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 uh, to, um, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So the more uh, I am, uh, the less I am controlled by this natural realm of awareness, awareness, what I see here in touch and so on, the more I am aware of how much I am living and thriving in the supernatural realm of spirit. All right, Dr. Cindy, bring it to us. Take your three minutes. I'm trying to think how could I say this in three minutes? Okay. Um, wow. All you guys, y'all are just, <laughs> woo, this is awesome. Um, and you know, you just can't talk with too many people about this kind of stuff. They don't get it. You know what I mean? It is so, uh, so refreshing. Okay, real quick. Um, so th this might sound like a mosaic train of thought. Is it going to be like, it sounds scattered, but it really does come together because uh, you got to let the Lord put it together for you, I guess. But you know, when you go to the Greek Orthodox Church and uh, I, we have, we go there frequently. We have friends there and, and we go to their events a lot. My husband teaches uh, Koine Greek, original uh, New Testament Greek and everything. So we go there uh, for festivals and things and um, love the culture. But when you go inside, uh, you know, what is called the nave, you know, it's called the nave. It's what you would probably call the sanctuary of a normal church, you know, or a traditional uh, church. And the nave, it comes from uh, the word navy, naval. It means a ship. Um, so when they enter into the nave of the Greek Orthodox Church, they they they, um, they all visualize. You know, Greece had a lot of shipper, shipping industry, right? And so they would enter into the nave, and they would see themselves as entering into a ship, safe from the storms, safe from the storms of life. And I think that's so beautiful because they would sit in the congregation in the nave. They called it. Uh, or call it. And then when you look up, you see nothing but icons all the way around. Just these beautiful icons of saints that have passed on. And when they worship, they worship with the saints. They worship with the, the saints of the church. They worship with their loved ones. They light candles when you go in and things for different uh, to acknowledge 
that those who are alive eternally, their, their flame has not gone out. They still shine. They're still light. They're still illuminated like us. It's so beautiful. I think they have a revelation that a lot of Protestants, you know, and evangelicals uh, have missed. I love that part of their, their worship. I like what um, you guys are talking about virtual reality and, and augmented realities and things like that. These things are um, kind of being spoken of a lot these days in uh, the multi-universe, the metaverse, uh, wearing the oculus and, 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 and imagining things. Um, these are some things that are becoming more and more a reality. Uh, the, the virtual reality is becoming more of a reality and augmented realities are becoming rea more and more reality. And um, I look at it like a, a sort of like a Venn diagram where time and eternity, they overlap each other. You know, it's kind of like an overlapping of time and eternity. And um, can I just say this before I, I, I close on these thoughts that I have? Um, I write a whole lot about the, Paris, the parousia, parousia. It is what is interpreted in, in with a lot of English translations of scripture as being the return of Christ. The appearing of Christ is the more accurate um, definition. It means the presence of Christ. And, and that is so encompassing. And that word encompassing is the great call to witness. We are so encompassed round about. We are so amphitheatered around about, like a theater. They're like an amphitheater. We are encompassed round about. They are, we are amphitheatered with the great call of witnesses and they are, they're cheering us on, always encouragement. That's how you know when you're in touch with it, with them, that realm, because they're, they're, they're cheering you on. They're, they're so encouraging. You're feeling the wind beneath your wings. You feel, wow, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting support from a, a supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting to be connected with that. So um, this is a beautiful show tonight, Dr. Bill, for grief counseling. Anyone who needs to be um, uh, talked through a time of grief and loss of a loved one, they didn't lose anything. They gained a lot. They gained far more than they lost because you can still connect with them. I know that um, a few years ago, we have a, a local fair. And we have, um, you know, Sister Gina that comes and reads the um, palms and, and all that kind of thing. She's got her little psychic tent. And I always go by and say, hi. I said, I, I wish you could learn that what you um, are tapping into is something that you could actually do uh, with uh, a relationship with Christ. Seriously, it's not something that should be, you know, into the occult or anything like that. I, I believe that, that that is an entrapment. And um, I, I always tell her, she goes, would you like a reading? And I always say, would you like one? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one for free, you know? And yeah. she's like, um, okay. <laughs> I want your buddy leaves. And I just start to, I call for Christ in her. I prophesy over her, you know, that, that she's got a gift and that God wants to use it. And she doesn't have to, you know, uh, lower her standards to this, uh, not to be condescending or critical, but to, uh, to, to coach her up in a higher place, in a higher position, you know, uh, to be above the influence. And, and um, she always, look, when I go by, I go, hi. And she goes, hi. You know, I got this connection with a little uh, town psychic. But um, anyway, I, I, I like to see her come into the, the light, you know, so. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, Evangelist Candy Corser said that that clouds are uh, a reflection of God's glory. Uh, high glory. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, okay, so um, we're going to give everybody about a two minute closing um, and then we're going to come back next week and continue to tear this up. This is so good. Uh, there's just so much more. Um, uh, and I want to say, everybody watching, if you're willing uh, and interested in more than only what you see with your eyes, hear with your ears, and touch with your hands in this natural appearance realm, then open your supernatural mind and believe in things beyond your natural surroundings. That's a good place to start. Okay, uh, 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 Dr. Christopher.
good place to start. So in, <clears throat> in, in, in learning these things and hearing these things tonight, um, it is so exciting for me to uh, walk in the reality of this part of my inheritance, this part of my identity. And I want to encourage everyone um, that's watching to do the same. Um, the, the Bible says that to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yes. But, but according to, you know, what religion had taught me, um, uh, it was not gain, it was loss. But, 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 but the scriptures speak contrary to that. And so as we walk out our oneness reality, as we embrace our identity um, for who we are before the foundations of the world, as we walk out the reality of walking in Christ um, as Christ um, and him manifesting as us, uh, I just want to encourage everyone to have the courage, if you, if, you are, if you have not, and those that are watching this telecast in the future, to have the courage to walk in the fullness of who we are. And that includes the, uh, that includes the ability to uh, communicate with those who have went into the invisibility. It is part of who we are. They have never left. We're always still connected. Dr. Bill? Amen. 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 All right, Apostle Daniel, bring it home. Talk to us. Wow. All I can say is wow. Uh, it, it just gets back to the beginning, and you, you always go back to Genesis. We're created in his very likeness and his very image. We are spirit, and we're living in a we're living out a spiritual experience in a natural environment. And the only thing that changes if you, if you are removed from the natural visibility environment, you just go back to spirit, which that is who you really are. So there really is, isn't a death factor. And we have been taught that it brings fear, brings grief. It causes people to be separated from the people they love when in fact they're not separated. It's just they, they haven't understood the reality of, of the fact that they are created in the image of their father and the father God is spirit. And so are we. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Apostle Brian. Well, you know, I haven't shared any encounters, so let me just uh, share a real quick one. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, this was this was some years ago, and I was doing a, a meeting in Illinois, uh, in the state of Illinois. And at night, the first night, I noticed when I turn off the lights in my hotel room to go to sleep, there were these dark storm clouds, almost like tornado clouds, swirling over my bed. I mean, I could see them with my eyes open in the darkness, and you could actually feel the moisture when you put your hand up in the air. I turn the light on, no cloud. Turn the light off, there it is. Dark purple and black and just swirling. And that next meeting, it was a whole weekend of meetings. The next meeting I went in and I'm ministering. And I noticed these horrified looks on the crowd's faces. And I'm, I, I actually had to stop. And I says, why is everyone staring at me like this? And one guy says, well, I just saw Abraham uh, morph on your face. And somebody else says, no, that was Ezekiel. Somebody else says, no, that was Elijah. And so they're going around the room. And it reminded me of the scripture when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Yeah. I don't yeah. think they were just had an idea. I think he had morphed the manifestation of the cloud of witness. And that they were beholding that inner flow of the many as the one. And so... It, when everybody's saying this at the meeting, um, one lady gets up offended saying this is necromancy and stomps out, okay? So we just kind of let her go. We go on with the meeting. Next meeting, that lady is back again. And uh, so I'm flowing. Nobody's making funny faces. So I think, okay, I'm good. Cause I thought for sure this was crazy. I'd never experienced this before. I thought I was deceived or something. This is years ago. And, uh, the lady all of a sudden gets up, screams, falls on her face. So I stop the meeting again and say, ma'am, what's going on? And she says, well, I'm sorry for calling you a necromancer, but my son who committed suicide three years ago just came through you to me. Uh, and your whole face changed into his face. 
and he came and we've been reconciled and I know he's in eternity and I know he's in heaven. And this was my first encounter with the no hell thing. See, I, I still believed in hell at this point. Okay. Mm. And so it was, it was really, really crazy. And the point is, is that, you know, like you said before, Bishop, at the Elohim, the many as the one, God has always been a multi-membered body. He's always been one. We are one. Uh, the people in the Bible that you relate to in your lifetime now are the ones that they, those prophets of old encountered you in their lifetime. Okay, so we were there helping Enoch to translate. We were there, and uh, real quick, I know I'm taking more than two minutes, but I was in my RV one day, and we were, me and a few people were just getting totally toasted in the glory, and uh, uh, all of a sudden, Isaiah walks in. Not Isaiah from the cloud today, Isaiah in his time period thousands of years ago, and the unglorified version, if I could put it that way, and he walks in with a with a tablet or a scroll and he's taking notes of everything we're talking about. And then I watched him go back to his time period and begin to preach, make straight the way of the Lord. In other words, many of the prophets tasted of this generation, took that revelation, uh, moved it in according to that generation as a mystery and begin to establish it for us to remember what we were carrying the entire time. So it's outside of time and space. It's co-laboring. Uh, they are not made perfect apart from us, and it's an ongoing now embrace. Oh, and I just say amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Wow. And, and I, I want to tell you, I've had some encounters myself, and here's the thing. Uh, there's nobody that can tell you whether your experience was valid or not. Uh, you were there. Uh, I've seen the Lord. I've, seen, I've interacted with the Lord, uh, and, uh, you know, hey, I was there. You can call me all kinds of names, but I was there. And that's just the way it is. Okay. Uh, Dr. Cindy, come on. Well, I just wanted to say that I'm so happy that we are actually discussing these things and we're doing it as surrendered lovers of Jesus. You know, we're, we're baptized in the Holy spirit. You know, we've embraced the truth of the kingdom of God. And so people that are watching this need to know that, you know, we are, we have not left the faith or anything like that. You know, in fact, our faith has been deepened because of these things. We've, we've grown more intimate with the father, with the Lord. We just gotten so much, in, so much closer because um, this is like a, Dr. Christopher, Apostle Christopher said earlier, this is our part, part of our inheritance. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Wow. Hey, uh, I'll tell you what, guys, thank you so much. Um, uh, my wife, uh, and I, I'm sure that's okay for me to say this because she put it on uh, in the chat room. Her, her best friend committed suicide when they were teen, uh, were teen. Uh, I've always wondered what, uh, what I could have done to prevent it, thinking somehow that it was my fault simply because I did not uh, do anything to stop her. Uh, I didn't know about it until after, but now Apostle Brian, you've confirmed that she is okay and in the cloud of witnesses, praise God. And, you know, that's exactly how I feel. It, it, it doesn't matter, you know, and guess what? You, you may not like it, uh, but even Hitler is in the cloud of witnesses. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, I've had to come to terms with that. Uh, because I was one of those people that didn't like him for all the things that he did. But, uh, you know, here's the reality. We've all got a past. Uh, we've all done some things. We've all been some places. And so uh, thank God for uh, the truth. Uh, the, hey, Jesus said, did, did you remember that scripture where Jesus said, hey, everybody, you'll know doctrine and doctrine will make you free. Remember that scripture? Yeah, not in the Bible. <laughs> and you'll know truth and truth will make you free. Amen. <laughs> and right, that's what's right. happening. Well, listen, everybody, uh, join me in the morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. We're still in the book of Joshua, chapter 10. Uh, also, Thursday, Dr. K. Fairchild will be with me. 
Friday, uh, Apostle Shane Mason will be finishing up a series this Friday. It's been so good. And thank you, panel, for being on tonight. Uh, Apostle Brian, thank you so much for uh, being our guest tonight. Uh, you, you've been a real blessing. And I can't wait till next week, everybody. Uh, so, panel, if you want to stay right there, you're welcome to. And I'll be right with you just as soon as we're done. Everybody, we love you. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.